for food for the soul. Ladies and gentlemen, up next we have one of the most awaited speakers for the evening. Don't know about you, but for us, Nagpur is synonymous with two things. Him, for sure, and oranges, perhaps. With a string of tremendous speeds to his credit, this is a man of many talents. With an impressive academic record, to his credit, and an even more enviable life outside the clinic. This is a man who's done it all. In case we didn't mention, he is also the curator of Adzon. And before we get ahead of ourselves, no, he is no god. Although, calling him one for the beauty and the idea that is Adzon, the app I mind you, wouldn't be an overstatement. Who's the greatest of all time amongst Messi and Ronaldo? That, that we may never know. <laughs> but we'd say, and we sure you'd conquer, this one right here is the goal. You think Instagramming while preparing for the exams is a task? Huh? Try running a YouTube career with an impressive 9.6 lakh subscribers, launching quality merch, podcasting and traveling. We're wondering if he comes with an extra 25th hour of the day by now. Or perhaps a time zone he's not telling us about. Marvel, we have our own Dr. Strange. From bringing his touch of meters to the medley, to being a Sunday staple to his ever-increasing loyal 10 a.m. club followers, to strumming his phone tunes, both in life and on the guitar, we find this our absolute pleasure to bring to you the man, the myth, the legend, a champion of medicine and suffice to say of life, Dr. Anand Pache. Hello everyone. Hello. So I have a story to tell you all. A story that I've lived many, many times during the last one year of my internship. Alright, so the story starts like this. It was late night in our trauma care center at GMC Nagpur. And uh, our seniors had just invited us to a chai break uh, in the doctor's side room. My co-intern and I went inside. We saw there were some cold slices of pizzas and some biscuits to go along with the chai. We sat and pondered, okay, the night has been pretty long. We have been seeing cases all night, from minor, minor injuries to major ones. And we were all sleepless. As soon as I took the first sip of the chai, I noticed the sound of an ambulance just had arrived outside. And the sound of a stretcher being rushed into the casualty was heard. The three residents and two interns left our midnight snack right there and we went out to check out what has happened in the two minutes that we were absent. We noticed a man who was brought to us in the casualty. He was 20 something year old and uh, he had a head injury. He also had a fractured leg from which there was active bleeding which was going on. And at the same moment we immediately noted that uh, his heart had stopped. He was an A system. So within few seconds, resuscitation measures were started. And uh, as you all know, in a cardiac arrest, we have to do CPR. So that's what I and my senior did. For the next 10 minutes, we took turns on giving him chest compressions. A breathing tube was put in to help him ventilate the lungs. And it was a very, very crucial situation, given the fact that it was my second night shift in my entire life. And it was just the second week of my internship. And uh, this was the first time I was seeing a patient like that. As a measure, we always have to check the pulse and I felt something on the carotids of the person who was being resuscitated. It was magic. The pulse had returned. The heart which was stopped had been restarted due to the chest compressions and the support that we gave him. While our ortho resident tried to stop the bleeding from the active fracture site. I thought to myself how fragile life is because upon further inquiry, I got to know that the person was supposed to get married today. Just four to six hours later, he was supposed to sit in his own wedding, but due to the happiness of the joy, he had been drinking a lot, and drinking and driving are not a great combination. He had fallen on the road after meeting some road traffic accident. Very luckily, there was a person who was educated who was going by and decided to help him. Bought the ambulance and took him to the casualty to us and we somehow managed to resuscitate the patient back. The thing was, immediately after the resuscitation was complete, he was put 
uh, onto ventilatory support and certain drugs to control his blood pressure, his bleeding, and to reduce his cerebral edema was started. Again, I thought to myself, how fragile life is. I did not even understand how one hour had almost passed since my midnight chai break was interrupted. And how that, that he was supposed to get married today and his family was supposed to cheer and joy and dance as their brother or friend gets married. But instead, he will be in the neurosurgery OT where the surgeons will try to decompress the brain because the clots have already formed between the neural layers. And how his family will sit outside the OT and try and hope and pray to God that their brother, friend, son or fiancé survives this. How fragile it will be if tomorrow we have to go outside and tell the mother that her son has passed away or the fiancé that she'll be alone. How fragile life is. Just two hours later after we managed that case, again an emergency was brought to us. Three ladies had fallen off from a fast moving train. One of them sustained a head injury. The other one had a limb missing. A complete leg was missing. Probably thrown away somewhere due to the high energy impact. And the last one had a head injury again. So we treated them like we were supposed to. And right when my shift was about to end at 8 a.m. in the morning, a man was brought to the casualty with a knife sticking out. He was claiming that his wife had stabbed him. I don't know what the man did, but I sure know that he had a pneumothorax and a hemothorax. He was not able to breathe and again began this cycle of assessing the patient and trying to treat him. You know, all of this goes to your head. When my duty ended, I was driving back home and as we all do, whenever we are driving, we don't think about the road or changing the gears, we think about everything that is happening in our life. So that is what I did as well. I reflected upon the cases that I saw. The images of the CPR or the pulse returning or the lady with the missing limb clung to my head. As I drove, drove back home, I was tired because I had not slept for more than 24 hours and um, so were my residents. We were all sleepless that night. And finally at home, I took some rest. Though my body was physically relieved of the stressors, my mind still clung on to whatever I had seen today. And you know what? That was not the only incident that happened. I would go on to experience many more such duties across the next few months posted in different clinical rotations. And every time I used to go in, I would see the patient in pain and I would feel their suffering for myself. Now what happened was that all of this pain and suffering that you see, especially when you are just starting out as a young doctor, when all your life was just books and exams and exams and exams and more exams and then immediately going into clinical rotations. On the other side, it, the, other, the other part of medicine was beautiful however. It is wonderful to see whenever any drug that we prescribe gets to work and the patient who has been coming to you three to four times sees the improvement in the symptoms and the life of the person becomes better. But the opposite, like I said, is also true. It's the feeling that we get when you examine a patient at the end and when the patient is left and you are left with the feeling of their pain and their suffering that you just witnessed. I still remember one 68-year-old man who was brought to our surgery casualty and he had acute abdomen. He had nobody to accompany him with. There was this one neighbor that bought him. And later, within few hours, we understood that he was actually having perforation. So for, for which he was taken to emergency surgery. I still remember the look on his face because of the person was in so much pain. Whenever you are doctors, you go around the hospital doing certain tasks from one point to the other point. And you move from places to places. And one specific thing which every one of you will experience is the fact that when you are passing next to wards, especially the pediatric wards, you will see mothers outside or brothers outside stopping for their child who is admitted inside. Or if you are passing next to the medicine ICU, you will see a line of relatives waiting out their turn to meet their loved one which is present inside. And I think that is something, the sight which nobody uh, else gets to see. You will see in the hospital, people will have mats placed on the corridors and in those mats, they will sleep entire nights. Some will stay awake because of the anxiety that what will happen to our relative and some 
will actually look at you with hope for you have the stethoscope around your neck and a white coat around your chest because you are a symbol of hope because you are a doctor. Uh, so a few months past my major clinical rotations are over, now the lighter ones were started. So in the lighter ones we don't have to work that much. But still I used to see the patients every day. I was free, you know, to do my own things. I was free to study for my examination and I did that. But I still carried all that grief that I had felt in the first few months when I started the internship. And that guilt was like a physical object. It was feeling like I was carrying something really heavy on my back. And I would think about the patients and the pain that I saw whenever I was walking alone or whenever I was having lunch alone by myself. And I understood that this is something which, which, which is very unique that doctors get to face a lot. So I talked to my co-doctors who were also present and asked them, do you also think about the patients that you are seeing every day after they have left? Do you think about the pain of their relatives when you are at your home? And almost every one of the persons that I spoke to said yes to a different level. And one particular incident I remember was one my pediatric resident, when I was talking to her about the same thing, she actually broke down crying because in the so many night shifts of the neonatal ICU, she had seen so many small babies passing away because sometimes we can't save a life no matter how hard we try. And this is the part of our profession that we have to live with. As a human life goes, you are supposed to see maybe like 20, 30 deaths in your entire life if you are 80 years old. But that is just a mere starting point in our journey as medical students or doctors. And I think that's profound. Because even if you look at the COVID warriors, the doctors which are sitting in front of you, the people who battled when the time was critical, you, they will still remember the nights which were extremely bothering to them. So after recognizing what the continuous working pattern inside the hospital for the first time after just being a student for such a long time does to you, I understood that I needed to do something because I can't possibly carry this entire guilt or entire grief on my shoulders. Because a lot of doctors do carry it and slowly and slowly they become emotionally numb and emotionally blunted so that nothing really matters to them. So I thought I need to preserve my emotional stability as well. And after reading a lot of self-help books, after a lot of uh, talks with many people and some spiritual books as well, I came up with the principle called as the positive prescription. And I applied that to my life in order to make it better as a medical student or a doctor. And today on the stage, I'll be sharing with you what that positive prescription is so that all of you guys can also make your life much better, especially when you're starting your work especially when all the medical students, all the faces that I see over here today, when they actually turn into professionals, how you can improve your life dramatically. So the first thing which uh, consists of my positive prescription is delegating time to your own self. You know, whenever we are posted in a duty, our day is determined by a duty. Subay se no baje jao, raat mein no baje wapis ao. Agar duty mein achcha ho raha hai, to tumhari life mein achcha ho raha hai. Agar duty mein kuch kharaab ho raha hai, to tumhari life mein kharaab ho raha hai and that is not how it's supposed to be. If you see this roof over here, if you think that this roof is your happiness, this roof is built on four pillars and your career is one pillar, your health is another pillar, your life outside your career is something else and the fourth pillar for you might be your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. So you have to balance all four of these pillars so that this roof should remain stable. And that's the same thing. Delegate time to yourself. Take out 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes every day just for yourself and do a hobby, do an activity which you enjoy. If you're good at dancing, do that. You know, my co actually dances in between the ward rounds in the side room. That's pretty weird, but that's his way of relieving his stress. So dance, sing, draw, or if you're somebody like me, you can try to record videos and put it out on the internet. By the way, I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> Go check it out after the talk. <laughs> So this is, this in this time, don't use social media, don't do things that you're doing professionally. Do it just for the fun of it. And you will realize that just by doing 10, 20 minutes of this exercise, you will remove so much stress from your life that you wouldn't even know. So this is something which you should all practice. My second principle of the positive description comes from an experience. And let me share that experience with you. 
So like I told you, I was feeling all that grief and so much uh, depression sort of thing during the middle of the internship. So I thought about talking things out to somebody. But uh, even though I'm very close with my friends and family, I really did not feel comfortable opening up. And I think that's a common problem that we all face because it's very specific to us medical students and doctors. We are not expected that everybody will understand this. So I went to a place, a place that I had been visiting hundreds of times in my life, a place that I knew had incredible positivity, and a place that I knew that so many people had trusted upon. I visited a place of worship near my house, and even though I have never believed in God in my entire life, in that moment I needed it to be true. So I visited a place of worship at 6:30 when the prayer started. I felt as if the grief which I was carrying on my shoulder was physically removed from my body and given on to a higher entity which would carry it for me so that I wouldn't have to be bearer of the pain that I am experiencing. And it does not matter uh, if you are a believer, if you are a non-believer, if you go to such a place, it will go away and you will feel a lot more positive. And if you feel like that's not something for you, find somebody whom you trust, find somebody who you actually like and speak out your problems with them. A study was conducted by Harvard, uh, it spanned across 12 years, it had more than 5,000 participants and the study actually showed that uh, if you don't you know, express things out, if you keep all the things within yourself, it increases the risk of premature death, they related it with cortisol and blood pressure increase. So I think that's very significant. And so the second point of my positive prescription is talk things out with the people that you love or the people that you trust. And if you, even if you have people that you love and trust and you don't want to open up with them, just go to a place, close your eyes and let it all go. Because you can't possibly as a doctor carry all of that. Am I right? The next thing about the positive prescription came from a book. A book that I had actually read many years ago but I had revisited. The book is called The Secret. You might have heard about it. It's a pretty controversial book but I learned one thing from that book which I still apply to my life on a day to day basis. And that is the law of attraction. So listen carefully, this law of attraction, it states that whatever you want, just think about it and it will come to you. That's the essence of the secret. So if you think about negative things, negative things will happen to you. I'll give you an example. In the morning you go to the ward and your professor scolds you. Your entire day, you find out small, small annoyances and your day becomes spoiled. And small, small things, your girlfriend is not talking to you, she has not picked up one of your calls. You find small, small details in your day and you ruin your entire day by your own self. So I think that's very significant. That if you seek negativity, negativity seeks you. But the reverse is also true. If you seek positivity, positivity seeks you. So every day, try some positive self-talk. I know it might sound cringe. You can talk to yourself. No, no. Sometimes you have to trust And that's what positive self-talk is all about. Whenever you will go into the hospital, you will be required to do so many procedures, right? And there will be certain procedures as a young doctor that you do for the first time. And every time before the procedure, you will ask yourself, this is so hard, how am I going to do this? So change this way of thinking into a positive one. Wow, this is a new opportunity to learn. Maybe if I practice it 10 times, I will get better. In this way, channel your thoughts to be in a much more positive manner. You will see that just small, small thoughts through the entire day will make your complete day beautiful. Have you got it? So those were my three very very important points of the positive prescription. See guys, you are going to be becoming doctors. As a doctor, you cannot make mistakes. You cannot misdiagnose. You cannot mistreat. At least you are not expected to. You are going to make a lot of mistakes along the way while you are learning. And there are going to be hurdles when you are in this learning phase. There will be bad days, there will be good days. And there will, be, there will be times when certain incidents like the one which I just described in the starting of the talk will affect you deeply. And in those instances you have to remember that you have to take care of the most important thing in the entire universe that is sitting on top of your shoulders, your mind, your infinite vast consciousness. Take care of it as you take care of patients. And my friends, that I guess was the essence of the positive prescription. Thank you so much.